if you look at your programs, I don't think you'll see my face in there. It's because I'm filling in for our chief marketing officer, Jeffrey Harmon, whose wife went into labor about six weeks early when they were on vacation. And so he, for very understandable reasons, had more important things to do, didn't want, uh, want to leave his wife and brand new, very small infant. So I'm filling in for him. I have been with Orbrush since we started about two and a half years ago. We sell, of all things, a tongue cleaner, which is kind of an odd thing to be selling online. But when we started, that was the only option we had. That was the only way we could sell it. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we've done that. We've, we've got a few different models that we've developed. One of them is called the engagement loop, and that's what I'm going to be discussing today. It's our strategy to take our, our viewers and our audience online and drive them to our offline presence and our, our, our consumers offline in stores and drive them back online. To tell you about how we kind of came to that, let me give you a little bit of background on the company itself. Um, we started online. Orbrush started two and a half years ago when an inventor named Dr. Bob, who was about 76 years old, had invented a tongue cleaner. And it was a great product. He was, had a PhD in mechanical, biomechanical engineering, uh, something like that. He was highly qualified and, and invented this thing, but had no idea how to sell it. He even got it on a few store shelves by go, just going to the retailers and saying, please carry this product. And they did so. He put it on the shelves, and people walked right past it without paying any attention. In a last-ditch effort, he went to a local university in Provo, Utah, and asked them to do this marketing group, to do marketing group of students to do a project. Can you figure out how to sell my tongue cleaner online? They studied it and decided that 92% of people wouldn't be interested in buying something like this online. But one of those students raised his hand in the, in the classroom and said, that means 8% of the internet might be interested in buying this. 8% of the internet is not an insignificant number. Are you sure you don't want to pursue this? That was Jeffrey Harmon. He connected with this inventor, and they started working on it, kind of a nights and weekends project. He decided to go towards social media because there's not really a barrier, barrier to entry. It's kind of the wild, wild west, even still today. Uh, and so he decided, let's try making a video. This is the outcome. Halitophobia, the irrational fear of bad breath. I'm a halitophobic. I'm not so much afraid of me having bad breath. I'm afraid of other people having bad breath. As in, hey buddy, your breath smells like crap. Maybe you should develop a case of halitophobia. Now I know what you're asking. How do we know if we have bad breath? You use this. You use a spoon. Now I know what you're thinking. A spoon, you eat with a spoon, you play spoons. You spoon your girlfriend. You take the spoon. You take the spoon and you stick it at the back of your tongue and gently scrape. Let it dry and take a whiff. If it stinks, your breath stinks. And if your breath stinks, this is the only kind of spooning you're gonna be getting. The smart viewer out there will know to check your bad breath, you notice that we checked our tongue. 90% of bad breath comes from bacteria and residue on the tongue. On your tongue. Now your mom doesn't sound so stupid for telling you to brush your tongue. Now does she? Tongues are like sponges soaking up all that bacteria. Toothbrushes are meant to clean the smooth surfaces of your teeth not your tongue. And the tongue scraper? You remember the sponge, right? The tongue scraper just goes over the top of your tongue. This ain't gonna work. And mouthwash? This is like trying to clean your carpet with a hose. You're just watering down the problem. And then there's the option that actually works. This, the Aura Brush. The soft bristles feel great on your tongue. You just go back and forth a few times, then go all the way back, pull it forward, and see what comes off. <laughs> cure to bad breath. You can use this longer than your toothbrush. Use it in the morning, eliminate morning breath, fresh breath all day, yeah, yeah, and then use it at night, right before bed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, huh? So do you and me and the rest of mankind a favor, get one of these. And your Uncle Steve, the one who looks like he's got a thick coat of fur on his tongue? Get him one too. Put it in his Christmas stocking. He'll thank you for it later. His wife will, the kids will, everybody will be happier. Trust me. Get your first Aura Brush free at AuraBrush.com slash free. <clears throat> like I said, we shot that after work on a Friday, and I didn't think anything of it. It was just kind of a fun thing that he was, you know, my buddy Jeff wanted to do. I'll give you $100. Come do this video with me. Great. I'll come do it. But that was summer 2009. That was right when they were opening up paid search on YouTube. YouTube had been around for a while, but paid search was brand new at that point. We put this on there and started promoting it and using every tool available and started figuring out every tool available and, and leveraging it heavily and optimizing every piece of metadata, the title, the thumbnail, the tags, the description. And when we reached a point where we were making back, say, $45 
for every 40 spent in promotions in, in sales, people would actually go and buy the brush. Get the first Aura brush free at orabrush.com slash free. Pay attention to that, it'll be important later. We started snowballing this effort, putting all of our profits back into promoting it, until months later, this had tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of views. Today, this is even outdated. It's almost 17 million views now. Um, and this was so successful, they decided we needed to start making other videos. And we turned it into a campaign, where for a long time, we were making a video every week. We even introduced another spokesman, a, a giant human tongue. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. What is our goal as a company? Our goal is, of course, to be the number one tongue cleaner in the world. Exactly. To become the number one social networking site online. Except the tide is turning back from virtual friendships to real life sharing. <laughs> People want to share with each other. I give you Aura Brush Plus. Everyone has something special to share. And sharing special moments with other people is important. But wouldn't it be great? digital advertising company as much as it was an oral care company. We put these out every week uh, with this character and both characters really, kind of an odd couple dynamic. And we gained quite a big following. Um, we also solicited reviews from major YouTubers. Now, in any community there are going to be stars. And amongst people who spend a great deal of time on YouTube, there are stars who you and I and a lot of other people might not recognize. But if a, a major YouTuber walk down the street and I spend five hours of my day on average on YouTube instead of TV, that person means something to me. We, we offered these big YouTubers, uh, said, hey, do a review of our product. We, we'll, we'll pay you to do it. Do an honest review. And they did. Something that we didn't expect from that was we obviously got a lot of views on those YouTubers doing a review of the product, but also their viewers decided to do a review as well to emulate their favorite YouTube stars. Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a review on the Aura Brush. Um, now what this is, is a tongue cleaner. Uh, let me get you a little bit of back information. All the bacteria and all that... got her first Aura Brush free, and then shared it with however many followers she had. And while that's not an enormous audience for a small YouTuber, that's a dedicated audience, and they're going to respond to that, and they're going to check out the product that she's talking about. With this method of regular content creation, focusing on creating content rather than just trying to shove the product in their face constantly, um, we gained quite a following. We have over 180,000, well, 160,000 subscribers now. I lose count. We're the third most subscribed sponsored channel on YouTube after Apple and Old Spice. Um, and we accomplished that spending a great deal less than them. We invested in it, but we didn't spend quite as much. YouTube is our, is our, is our home, it's our bread and butter, that's where we spend most of our time, but we didn't want to just stay there. We wanted to go to wherever our audience was. Someplace else that we knew our audience was, was in apps, applications. So here's Aura Brush, a tongue cleaner company going into mobile apps. We created I'm this the video. the first bad breath detector for the iPhone. 
testing an iPhone application. It's a bad breath detector. No way. Wait, look, it says bad breath detector right there. Oh gosh. I don't know if my breath will stand up to the test. Maybe we'll that aura breath thing. Uh huh. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> see how effective that is. You hit the button. You blow at the bottom for three seconds. Ready, set, blow. Way to go, breath. Did it really just get my breath? Ready, set, go. You just. I feel violated. <laughs> How does it decide? Like, what? To test your breath. I know, but what makes a good breath or bad breath? Well, I just drank some root beer, so it's probably pretty bad, actually. It smells like a skunk crawled out of the sewer, into your mouth, farted, and then died, and then farted again. Okay. Wow. Good job. Thank you. It was good for me. How was it for you? Good Perfect. Job. That's good, then, isn't it? Yeah. Urine. Just because it's sterile doesn't mean you should drink it. Gross. That's awful. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. Does it just get better and better every time? Yes, yes. I smell dead people. <laughs> this is crushing my hopes and dreams. You ever made out with a phone? Now's your chance. All right. Certifiably smoochable. They should make your breath scented candles. I think it's biased. How is it biased? It's, it's a, just a test. This is scientific. It's oh, how was it? I've always wondered what it tastes like. Do you have good or bad breath? It's excellent. Excellent? Let's see. Well, let's try it out. Blow. It's as if fresh bread and fresh flowers married and consummated in your mouth. I told you. Good job. Oh, excellent. <laughs> fresh bread and fresh flowers consummated in my mouth. Has anyone ever told you your breath smells wonderful? They never will. Excuse me, we're making a YouTube video? David Vanesky was talking about taking risks. This was kind of a risk for us, but it paid off. Uh, as have a lot of our, our angles. We, we take these risks, sometimes they do not pay off. Sometimes they just fizzle or sometimes they backfire and we gotta do a little bit of, of management. Most of the time they work out pretty well. This video we have not promoted at all. We have not put any money behind pushing this video. It has well over a million views. The app itself at this point has over 400,000 downloads. This is a great parlor trick that people pull out at parties and share with their friends and then they want to give it a shot. It's branded all over and right from the app they can go watch our sales video of test your bad breath. You know how you can fix that bad breath? With an Aura brush. Um, it's been very successful for us. Remember when I said get your first Aura brush free at aurabrush.com slash free. To get that first Aura brush free you had to come to our Facebook page and you had to become a fan. We got a lot of fans that way. Uh, people are not that reticent to click like if they think they're going get, to get a fun new toy out of it. Um, we got over 300,000 fans, and using that fan base, we now can do market research. What do you guys think the next color should be? What should our next product be? Uh, what do you guys like about this? What do you dislike about this? We're looking for a focus group. We want to do a focus group. Who wants to enlist uh, from our, our current user base? The Facebook fan page has been great because it keeps our users engaged with the brand regularly. From all of the social media exposure that we got and the success that we've had there, it it rolled into mainstream media exposure, which we hadn't fully anticipated. We got covered by the New York Times, ABC Nightline, the Wall Street Journal. Um, here's, a, here's a video about tongue cleaning. But people were watching it. Why was this so compelling? And how could this group from, from Provo, Utah, who had no major media experience or no big bucks behind them, how could they pull this off? And that's what these are major, major media outlets were asking. We shared with them the same story that I'm sharing with you today. Advertising, advertising Age named us one of the top 10 social campaigns of 2010, and uh, this was fun. TechCrunch said that we were the Justin Bieber of mouth care, which for the YouTube world is a pretty big deal. That's where Bieber got his start. Um, we were right up there with major brands like Pepsi and Old Spice, but they were saying that we had done this with a product that nobody had heard of before, which makes it even more impressive. That's where we started. We started online, but we didn't want to stay online. Remember that class that studied the Aura Brush? They said that 92% of people wouldn't be interested in buying something like this online. That, that lines up perfectly with some market research that we've found. 93% of sales happen offline. So how are we going to get into offline locations? Well, our social media exposure got retailers interested in our product. We started getting calls from retailers across the globe in Japan, Australia, Canada, the UK. Uh, saying, I've had customers come to me asking for this tongue cleaner, and I don't know who you guys are, but they do, and I would like to sell it. So that was more than happy to oblige there. The hardest place to get into retail was the United States, and especially Walmart. 
that was, that's the biggest reseller. That's, that's the elephant in the room. That's who we wanted to get. Um, and so we used social media to make that happen. Dr. Bob uh, teamed up with some college students to try to figure out how to sell his tongue cleaner online. We figured out using YouTube how to effectively sell the Aura brush on the internet. We sold almost a million of these. And even after tens of thousands of comments from our YouTube channel saying, why can't we buy you in major stores? Why can't I go down to Walmart? We still had a hard time getting a hold of major retailers like Walmart. One of the Walmart store managers had seen our videos and uh, became familiar with Aura brush and ordered an Aura brush and used it for several months. And after that, he wanted to have uh, Aura brush in his store. So he contacted us and say, hey, I'd love to carry your tongue cleaner in my store. Some Walmart managers from other stores were going on a store tour and they went through his Walmart, saw our display and were so impressed by just the display that they all wanted it as well. So within about two or three weeks, we had uh, 20 uh, Walmart stores uh, carrying a brush. The sales here in Utah were so good that we knew it was time to get in touch with Walmart headquarters. Uh, to do a broader launch outside of just this state, but get it everywhere. We decided to do some advertising in magazines where we spent uh, over $20,000 and it was just not successful at all. In addition to that, we sent a video to the buyer at Walmart headquarters designed specifically for Walmart executives. Hi, Michael. Thanks for carrying everything a person could ever want anywhere, ever, anytime, ever. Michael J. Fox. That's a different Michael. Hey, anytime you want to lend me the DeLorean, I'd love to go back in time. Not the same Michael. So on the DVD, it was personalized and customized with their names. Hi, we're Aura Brush. Here are our sales numbers in the test market in Utah. We had videos of customer reviews, and we had our YouTube videos that we put up, and we had a lot of the mainstream media coverage. We included that as well. There was a lot going on that we wanted to make sure they knew about. So we sent them that DVD and got their attention. We wanted to keep their attention while they were making the decision as to whether to pick up Aura Brush for a national launch. So we tried some other different things. Jeff Harmon, who's in charge of our marketing, decides we should do a Facebook ad and we should target it just at Walmart employees right around Walmart headquarters, national headquarters. We created an ad that said that Walmart employees have bad breath and they better start carrying the Aura Brush in their store. And within a couple days and just $28 in ad spend later, we got an email from them saying, okay, we saw your ad, very funny, you can, you can stop running that ad now. Now they already knew about us, we were selling the brush in stores in Utah and having a lot of success and they'd seen our DVD, but that Facebook ad kept their attention and let them know that we know what we're doing online, we can, we can get this in front of people. Walmart was very interested in the sales of Aura Brush, not necessarily in the YouTube advertisements that we were producing. But the sales were so good, they just couldn't say no. We've been contacted by a lot of other smaller retailers, and we've learned that they always want to meet face to face. There's a lot of phone calls involved. Some of them want us to fax them information. Faxing. It's 2011. So we were expecting when we were talking to Walmart and messaging them, we were waiting for the email where they were going to say, you know what, why don't we meet face to face? Why don't you fly out here? We'll talk about this in person. And then one day we got an email that said, can you support 735,000 Aura brushes by August? Yeah, yeah, we can handle that. We, sure, we can support that. So they send us this request with no face to face meeting, no video conference, not even any phone calls. This was all done through email. Holy crap. And my taste buds are standing yeah. on end. They should. Two years ago, we're selling the Aura Brush out of our garage. Aura Brush is the first company to go from, from nothing, from no distribution, to nationwide retail distribution using only YouTube. And we did it in the oral hygiene category, which is, which is kind of crazy because that category is dominated by a few big companies. It was Walmart that gave their local managers the freedom to pick up local products and try them out, see how they do. And because of that, within a year, we're in every Walmart in the country. So, you've probably heard... You've probably heard other people here talking about how you have a story to share. You have something worth talking about. Uh, we just heard about how you need to be offering an experience. People buy an experience. We've been very careful at Orbrush about crafting our story. Uh, we have a story to share. 
And in telling that story, we further the story itself. This video was not an accident. It wasn't an afterthought. We created that so that the right people would see it. And this video, while not seen by a huge audience, was seen by the right audience. And it's opened doors for us. Thanks for carrying everything a person could ever want anywhere, ever, anytime, ever. This is the video we sent to the Walmart buyer. That's a different Michael. Hey, anytime you want to lend me the DeLorean, I'd love to go back in time. Not the same Michael. I'm the Orbrush guy. And I'm Morgan the Tongue. I'm a YouTube sensation. Right. And thanks to Kurt <laughs> TV end cap display in Walmart number two, and to the other 18 Walmarts that followed Orbrush in Walmarts weeks 42 through 48 sold. <laughs> for a single SKU oral hygiene product. Holy crap. My taste buds are standing yeah, on end. They should. It's not just a Utah phenomenon either. Orbrush has been featured by a number of major news. We tried to make it as informative as possible and also entertaining. We got their attention and they immediately wanted to talk to us after receiving that. Uh, social media and video were our strength and we've played to those, not just in, in B2C, but also B2B and in, in interfacing with our partners and prospective partners. Video has been very effective for us and we'll continue to work with it because of how effective it is. When we make video very prominent in our, in our sales process, conversion rates go way up, two to three times once we put a good conversion video on there. You can't just put any video, but if you have a good video that explains why your service or product helps, sales will go way up. And this happens both on the web and in real life. We put some displays in retail locations to see how video would do there. We found people would be walking through the store and they would stop and start watching and spend five minutes standing in front of our display and eventually would walk away with several products in their basket. Here's why this is pretty important for just about everybody. People generally buy things in stores right now, and that's going to continue to be the case, but, but look at how much the growth is from people researching off online and buying offline. That middle bracket there, that's people doing their research offline and then buying in a store. If you have anything that you're offering in a retail location, obviously the experience there needs to be set up properly. But also your online presence is going to increasingly matter. It's going to make a big difference to your company that you have a presence there that you can tell your story online because people are going to be referencing that. For video specifically, 48 hours are uploaded every minute to YouTube. And this number at the bottom of 3 billion views every day on the site is now outdated. YouTube has said that it's now up to 4 billion views. That's more than all of the networks combined. Um, I, th I think it's like more than all the networks had ever broadcast combined. It's some phenomenal, unbelievable, astronomical number that's really hard to wrap your head around. So how do you make yourself relevant? How do you make yourself heard in that kind of cacophony of so much video? You just have to offer an authentic experience. Most of the time with those videos, we're not really trying to hawk the aura brush to people. We're not shoving the product in their face saying, look at this, buy it, it's so great. I mean, obviously there's a pitch there, but it's, it's almost implicit in a lot of the cases. Most of the videos we have are just to entertain are just to keep people informed and, and smiling and laughing and to, to generate this kind of positive feeling toward the company. You're probably familiar with this path to purchase model. The people see the stimulus, the ad, decide whether or not they're going to buy and then decide whether or not they're gonna buy again, whether they like it, whether they're gonna to refer to friends. With, with the web being so present and so inescapable, this path is now disrupted. What you see now is the zero moment of truth where people are ex experiencing the stimulus, the ad, whatever it is, and then doing a little bit of research. And that can be right on the spot. I can see the product in the store and then do a little bit of research on my phone to find out whether I want this, what are the Amazon reviews, etc. Deciding whether I wanna buy it and then deciding whether or not I like it after I've used it and then feeding back into that loop, telling other people so that when they go to research this product, they can decide based off of what other people have experienced. If you're not part of this process, if you're not crafting that story and, and being involved in what your consumers are saying with you, if you're not interfacing with them, they're gonna have control there and you, and you won't. It's kind of a scary prospect, but it's, it's inescapable. Um, we're driving people back to our online presence and making sure that, that they go to the sources that we hope they will. With our offline presence, we put As Seen on YouTube, we're the first company to do that. On our packaging, we called up YouTube and asked them, can we put this on there? And they're like, I don't know. Let me hang on, let me go check. We've never had anybody ask us that before. We were really excited to do that and it's, it's worked very well. Uh, people go to our YouTube channel, they go to our website from the packaging in the store. They get introduced to the product and then become 
very familiar with it, not just from the product in hand, but from the media that we've created. That's our engagement loop, drive people online to offline and offline again, stay engaged with the brand and continue to have uh, a growing fondness for the brand through that process. I would mentioned we'd, we'd been careful to craft our story. When the social network came out and became popular, we figured we could have a movie too. play golf. Let me see that. Have you ever heard of YouTube? I can make your script funny, but you'll need an actor. Hi, we've got a couple things to discuss here. I asked for this for no onions. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if I had ordered extra onions, but I didn't. I ordered no onions because I care what my breath smells like. So if you'll notice, I'm single by myself at this table. And if I want to stay that way, then order extra onions next time. We're making a video for YouTube. Palatophobia, the irrational fear of bad breath. I'm a palatophobic. 90% of bad breath comes from bacteria and residue on the tongue. On your tongue. You said you could handle this! I never thought it would turn into this! Don't let me down. Get in. Ever hear of P&G? Uh, portable network graphics. What? No. Uh, Papua New Guinea. Not P-N-G. P-N-G. Procter and Gamble. You're Jeff Davis. What do you want? Two words. Aura brush. 76-year-old Robert Wagseth. Yeah, Aura Brush is out to cure the world of bad breath. The product is a little plastic brush designed to scrub and scrape the tongue. Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, Nightline. We're in Canada, Australia, Japan. We're going to retail. What do you want, Dr. Bob? I want to be the number one tongue cleaner in the world. We got Austin Craig. You're going to need him. But you're missing something. Okay, enough already. Who is this guy? Who said he was a guy? What the? It's a giant tongue. You're going to cure the world of bad breath? <laughs> Watch me. You'd be shocked how many people thought we were actually making a feature film. Um, that video now has a couple million views too. Telling your story matters quite a, quite a lot. It's made all the difference to Aura Brush. Uh, being authentic, just trying to identify with the people that, that are are buying our product, and we hope will buy our product. Offering them value by way of just a smile, something they can laugh at, something they can enjoy. And then telling our story and, and having kind of that per personal connection there has made an enormous, enormous difference to us. Um, a little creativity can go a long way. Thank you. I'd studied broadcast journalism at school. Okay. So I was all prepped to go. Thank you for joining us for the evening news. My name is Austin Craig, so, you know, like whatever that is. But right about the time I was graduating is when we did this first video, and uh, this was way more fun. I decided I didn't really want to do news. How does the creative process work? How do you come up with the concepts? And I'm sure you do a lot of ad libbing, but it seems very yeah. Our, innovative. The, the guy in the tongue costume is a stand up comedian, he's hysterical. A lot of his stuff is ad-libbing. He and his brother are our chief writers. It's a small creative group. We have a meeting once every week, um, concept pieces. They'll write some scripts. We'll offer feedback, and we iterate very quickly. Uh, I should say that it was every week. We've recently started going to a longer interval, 
so that we can focus on putting more resources into our videos and making them really exceptional. Uh, because while consistently is fantastic, and if you're going to release content, you have to be consistent, we also wanted to make sure that it was something that was really funny, really good, something that people definitely want to share. So that's where our efforts and focus are now. We release about once a month now. How many videos do you do um, a year, and do you have a strategy of producing video content since you have so much success um, since then? Yeah, we do. Um, one of the other things that, that we occasionally get asked to speak about is exactly that. Like, what is our strategy for the video itself? How do we create those videos? Um, we have about a little over 100 videos now over uh, a year of regularly releasing on average once a week. Um, about a year and a half of doing that. Um, and I guess if we have 100 and it's been a year and a half, we're releasing a little bit more than once a week. But there were four things that we tried to do with each of our videos. Uh, we tried to be consistent, to re regularly release our videos. We set a deadline for ourselves we were going to release once a week, and we always hit that deadline. We'd stay up all night if we had to to release a video and get it ready for the next day. Um, we always have a call to action at the end of our videos. We always say, you know, now that you've seen this, now that you've enjoyed our video, watch this next one or get your free Aura brush or like us on Facebook. We always direct them very explicitly what they should do from there. Um, we collaborate with a lot of major YouTubers. So where we had some of them do these reviews of the Aura brush, we also invite them to come be in our videos or ask if we can come cameo in their videos. That's been very successful and has driven a lot of traffic to our channel and to our site and brought us a lot of new customers. Um, there are four of them. I've named three. And we just focus on content, making sure that the content is something that we would actually like to watch, that we would laugh at, that we would enjoy. Uh, focusing on quality content, even on a low budget, it can be done. And making sure that we have stuff that we're glad to show. Content, collaboration, consistency, and calls to action have been a huge, a huge thing for us in, in focusing on how we do our videos. Thanks, great talk. Thank how you. did you go from the initial part of selecting the 8% and saying which audience you're going to focus on and how do you iterate who's your target audience? So many of our choices at Orbrush have been out of necessity. We went to YouTube and, and Facebook not because like, this is the place we want to be, all right, this is where all the cool kids are at. It's because we had nowhere else to go. We didn't have a budget. We had to go someplace where there was no financial barrier to entry. Because we were on YouTube, a lot of the people who spend a great deal of time on YouTube, at least a couple of years ago, was a younger audience. It was teens, early teens, preteens even. And so we figured that these videos, kind of their silly humor, is something that teens would enjoy, that kids would enjoy and share. We had a lot of success with that. Um, you know, it, it's, not, it's not terribly highbrow humor, I have to admit. But by going for that, by going to, to the, the, the audience that was available to us, that younger audience, um, we were able to reach more people than I think we ever could have otherwise. I didn't bring samples. Yeah. But I have an excuse. I'm filling in for Jeff Harmon in the last minute. I've been on the road for two weeks. I was in New York and then South by Southwest and then Costa Rica. I flew here straight from here, straight from there last night. I promised I would have brought some. I had to get some business cards printed at Kinko's this morning. This could be as wacky as your wonderful presentation, but are you going to sell um, deodorant or are you going to have Betty White do something for Adult Depends? <laughs> we've, uh, we've talked a lot about serializing the model, right? The product is fantastic and you have to have a good product. You have to be peddling something that people actually care about and want to have and are going to enjoy and say good things about after they use. Once that's in place, and we have that in place, we've focused on how we're going to get it out there, how we're going to get people to use it. And our model has been very successful. It's worked really well. Using YouTube and, and focusing on best, best practices on that platform, that's transferable to any number of different products and services. That's, that's going to be a next step for our company is, yes, we're going to continue to focus on oral care and having other products in oral care. In fact, we just released our second product, Aura Brush Tongue Foam. Go pick it up at CVS today. Um, it's like toothpaste for your Aura Brush. But we're also going to take that and apply it to other products outside of the oral care category, products with other companies. Uh, the reason I'm even here sharing this, I think, is they want me to come and show you this so you guys can take it back and do it with your own companies, do it with your own clients, that this platform works for anything and that these lessons work for 
YouTube, and, and also work cross-platforms. You can apply focusing on content, collaboration, consistency, calls to action. That works on blogs. That works on any of these social platforms. You know, uh, the lessons we've learned here are very transferable, and we're going to be taking them elsewhere. This is um, Rob with Media Post. I was just curious if you made any videos before those characters were realized, and, um, and were they successful or not? Did you learn anything before you actually kind of honed in on those particular characters? The, the characters, so that a first video that you saw, the like, I'm a halids phobic, that was, the lab coat and goggles were like an afterthought. But then that became the character. Orbrush guy wears lab coat and goggles almost all the time. We almost don't do a video anymore where I'm not wearing lab coat and goggles. The tongue character, he initially was kind of a Charlie Brown type where he's just like down on his luck all the time and just kind of this person that you feel bad for a lot. That character has developed a lot over the year and a half that we've had him in videos. Um, you just kind of have to do things and see how it's feeling and where it needs to go. There was, a, again, a lot of iteration going on. Um, we've even tried some videos that, that weren't hits by any measure, where it just wasn't working because we tried to tweak the characters and tweak what was going on there and, it, and people weren't identifying with it the way they used to. So we've tried different directions and just run with the ones that seem to be working. I guess your inventor um, had said you tried print advertising and it was a big disaster. We, we ran ads in a trade magazine. What did they look like, the print ads? Or? Pretty regular. Had a picture of the guy in the tongue costume. That's different. But the guy in the tongue costume and then a lot of copy on our company and what we'd done and how we'd grown and our online presence. We spent $20,000 on those ads and the only response we got was people calling to see if we wanted to buy their services, <laughs> which we were not interested in. Uh, it, that Facebook ad that we did targeting Walmart executives, they thought we were running that ad all over the country. They didn't realize that we targeted Birmingham, or not Birmingham, where, where are they headquartered? I don't remember. Bentonville. Bentonville, thank you. They didn't realize we targeted Bentonville. We targeted Walmart employees who had college degrees. Like, it was a very narrow audience that we were targeting. They thought we were broadcasting that heavily. And two days later, we get an email from a Walmart VP of sales saying, like, turn that off, please, immediately. Um, <laughs> The trade ad didn't do anything for us. Creativity and a little bit of risk, and that was a risk. Like, I'm not sure those guys really liked the Facebook ad that we were running, but it definitely got their attention. Um, creativity and risk paid off for us in a big way. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. You would, like, rock the place. It was a fantastic presentation. So uh, there's another coffee, and 